Have you seen this game, DayZ? It's a survival game with a huge open world map. If you die, you lose all your gear, everything. You must eat and drink to stay alive. Your biggest enemies are not the zombies, but other survivors. Sounds the perfect game for me. Two hours later. No, no, no. Oh, shit. Fuck off. I don't want to play this game anymore. Wait. Hear me out. DayZ is very hard for a beginner. It does not hold your hand if you're new to this game. So take my hand and let me guide you. Let me be your hero. So your character has spawned in. Now what? Before you can even look for loot, you have to work out where you are. And trust me, the more you play, the more you die, the more you will get used to these spawn points. But for now, the answer is town signs. These signs have a blue background. They tell you the town's direction and distance. Are the signs in Russian? Yes. But this is when you make a new best friend. I Survive. Download it onto your PC or mobile and tablet. On the I Survive map, it shows the Russian town name and below that is the English. So the first sign we looked at, the sea was on our left and it showed Solinichny was ahead of us and Berezino was to our right. Now as we look at this sign, the sea is on our right side, Svet is four miles ahead of us and again, Birizino is to our left. Based on all the info, we can see we have spawned just outside Nizhny. As well as I survive, it's important to look at certain landmarks when you spawn in. Here I have spawned in and I can see the plane crash building that sits in Cherno. As we're looking at Cherno, the sea is on our right side. I have I've survives filtered down to a minimum. You can just see town names and gas stations. And right in front of us is a gas station. Based on all that, we can say we have spawned into the west side of Cherno. This sign here with a white background tells me I'm just about to go into the town of Cherno. There are so many spawn points, but on Shinara's map, you always spawn on the coast. So remember these tips, and hopefully, you are now ready to loot up. One of the first things we need to be looking for is clothing. It's essential to get warmer clothing than what you spawn in with. Here David has found a sexy jump with high insulation. Ideally, you want to be picking up clothing that states it as high or best insulation. Looking good, David. Looking good. Here we see my temperature icon is white, and it will stay this way with decent insulation clothing and not wearing wet clothes. If this icon goes dark blue, then you're in trouble. You will get a cold, and the sick icon will show up. Take vitamins and tetracycline found at hospitals to cure this. A fire is another way to get your temperature up, but we'll go over that a little later in the video. Food is another necessity when starting from new spawn, and a knife goes a long way to helping with this. You can find knives around Shinaras, but you can also craft one by combining two small stones to make a stone knife. Not only does a knife open tinned food and help to get a fire going, it will help with your quest in getting one of these. Here we see a hen. Watch as it readies itself to make a fool of me. Most servers use spawn in as a fresh spawn with just one piece of fruit, so it's high on the priority list to get some sort of food as soon as possible. Along with chickens, there's a host of wildlife out there to be hunted and ate. There's also tin food to be found, as well as fruit found on the floor. Fruit tends to appear on the ground if you have been around that area for some time, or if another player has been around for some time too. When picking up a piece of fruit, you can see how edible it is by its coloured circle. This plum is a green circle, which means it's perfect. If it was orange, means edible, but be careful. Red, well, red means you will be suffering with shit without breaks if you eat that, so best to stay clear. This colour circle applies to all items you find. Now that we've eaten, our food energy icon in the shape of an apple is going up, and it's going up towards white. But if it's flashing red, water, hydration, is a lot easier to handle. If you ever find a bottle of water, make sure not to drink it, as it needs to be disinfected. Unless you have chlorine tablets on you, then best to empty it first and fill it up at a later time. As well as water bottles and other drinks found in game, you can drink straight from wells and streams. And as a beginner, your best way of getting to these wells is our old buddy, I Survive. It's worth noting that none of this list is in order of importance. Aside from learning your spawn areas, Pick up whatever item you see first. You see a knife first, pick it up. You see a water bottle first, 
Pick it up. You see an item of clothing first. Pick it up. You see a chicken first. Destroy it. You see a can of beans first. You pick it up. You see a pear first. Pick it up. You see a hat first. Pick it up. You see a backpack first. A melee weapon is a great asset to have when dealing with zombies. It can also be handy if a player tries attacking you or if you fancy your chances against another player. I recommend getting a melee weapon that has a multi-use, like an axe, shovel, hatchet, machete. These can all be used for other things other than protection, like burying items, collecting bark, cutting rags, chopping wood, opening cans, the list goes on. Melee weapons are also handy for taking out zombies for their loot. Some zombies will be wearing what you want from them, like this zombie carrying a backpack. As long as I don't damage the backpack as I'm taking him out, then I can take it. Getting hold of a backpack should be high on the list of priorities when you are a new spawn. Zombies also have equipped stab vests and plate carriers, and they also carry food, but you have to take them down first to see if they have that in their inventory. It's always worth trying this, especially if you start getting desperate for food. For those lonely winter nights, you're going to want to build a fireplace. Using a sharp melee, ideally a knife, cut some bark off a tree, then cut some long sticks from a bush and split the long stick to make short sticks. Combine them both to make a fireplace. If you don't have matches or a lighter, combine a bark with a short stick to make a fire drill kit that can be used to start your fire. It can only be used once. If you have an item like an axe, then you could get firewood from a tree and add it to your fireplace. A, it makes the fire last longer. B, looks like a proper fireplace now. Place the fire into the fireplace, earn your serial killer badge, and skin your chicken. If you're not wearing gloves, then don't forget to wash those hands after touching raw meat. Who are? When cooking your food, you have a choice of how you cook it. To receive more energy, choose to cook it, as it gives you that bit more. Smoking your food, however, you won't receive as much energy, but your food will last longer. If you find yourself caught in the rain for too long, the wet icon will appear on your HUD. Leave it too long and you will catch a cold. That's treatable by taking tetracycline or vitamins. If you hover over an item of clothing in your inventory, it will tell you if that item of clothing is drenched, wet or damp. To dry your clothes, be in close proximity to your fire and drop your clothes to the ground. Put the rabbit back in the hutch, David. Always make sure none of what you are about to drop is ruined as you won't be able to put it back on once you've dropped it. Now hover over the items and once there's no status there, you can put the item back on. If you stay close to the fire, a plus sign will appear on your temperature icon. This is a heat buff and you will stay white temperature for a period of time. When sat in a house with a cosy fire and listening to the Backstreet Boys, bear in mind you are letting players know exactly where you are. Guns. You're not gonna find the best guns wherever you spawn in, unless you're on a hundred times loot server. Residential, and this place here is your best chance. Police stations. They can be a dangerous place to go to as a new spawn, but as a new spawn, you have nothing to lose. With Daisy, when finding a gun, you have to load your magazines to your guns manually. To do this, take the mag off and load it up with the ammo that fits to that gun. Some guns, like the shotgun, are chambered only. Now, look out for weapon repair kits as you don't want your gun getting jammed as you're mid-gunfight. Daisy is a steep learning curve. If you stick with it and get over those first few hurdles, you're going to come away with some of the best gaming memories. Killing a group of three. Getting shot in the head while fishing. Yes, there's fishing. Fishing rod, fish hook, worm, fish. Meeting up with a random stranger. Playing with them for three hours. Only for them to shoot you when your back is turned. Yes, it happened to me. Don't be afraid to die. That's my advice to a new player. Don't be afraid to die. Because you will die. You will lose all your loot. And it will happen again. And again. But for every death, you will match that with a funny encounter. A new friend. Your greatest kill. Your amazing base. The shelter you built that nobody has found. Don't be afraid to mix it up though. Have your mic on. Try approaching players. Also, as a new spawn, try your luck against the geared player. You have nothing to lose. So disinfect those rags and give it a try. I hope you have found this video useful. And if you're a veteran DayZ player that has any tips and tricks, then please share it in the comments section. 
If you did find this video helpful, then please feel free to leave a like. I've been Reseda Man, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon. Take care people, take care. Thank you.